Hi everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to download Landsat data for free. So it's pretty simple to do. We're simply going to go to Earth Explorer, explorer.usgs.gov, and this is where we can download the data. So you're going to have to um, make sure you're logged in. Um, you're going to have to create an account if you don't have one already. And you'll want to do that before we start downloading. Um, so I'm going to go to home here. It looks like I have results pulled up already. So let me just clear everything I have here. Okay, good deal. We'll zoom out a little bit. I'm just zoomed into an area here in northern Idaho. Um, you can choose whatever area you'd like in the United States or even worldwide. Landsat will have data worldwide. So I'm going to just kind of zoom into this area here. And I don't really care where my image is in this area as long as it's close. Um, and the next thing I want to do here is select the area that I want to search for images in. And so if I come down to this search criteria, you can enter a place here if you want to, or, or a geocoder. I usually come down and use this polygon method and click use map. And what happens here is it just puts the extent to be the extent of your screen. And you can adjust these polygons um, accordingly or just these points to change your polygon accordingly. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of zoom in down here, maybe, I don't know, something in this region like that. Um, give me northern Idaho. That's going to pull up any images in that area. The next thing I need to do is select a date range. And so the date range that I'm going to do here is just the month of August 2019, so the current month. If you want to, you can select over multiple years and get images just for certain months. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to download one image here. Okay. And so once you have that, then you can click this data sets button and choose the data sets you want. So I already had Lance today selected. Saved my um, saved what I was doing from the last time I logged in. Uh, but you can see there are a lot of different data products you can get. You can get elevation here if you'd like to. Um, that's not what we're after today. But if you come down to Landsat, you can see that you have different uh, options here. So you've got this burned area, fractional snow covered area, dynamic water surface extent. So you've got a lot of different things you can get from these level data here. So these are analysis ready data. You can get these uh, data that are level two data or level one data. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get the analysis ready data for this one. You know, so you get level one, which are the pretty raw data. So I'm gonna select the um, uh, analysis ready. And then we're gonna go look for our additional criteria. So we can select it here, or you can also select it in the top panel up here. So additional criteria, um, this can give us just kind of the location, the region. Um, I'm going to just skip all that. I'm going to set my cloud cover to less than 10 and my cloud shadow to less than 10 also. Um, and this is where the no data values are. If you want less than 10% of your image to be no data or whatever you want. There. I'm just going to leave it at all for this one. And I'm going to select only Landsat 8 and the um, OLI and TIRS. And you can look into these a little more for Landsat 8 if you want to find out exactly what these different sensors are. And then once you've done that, you can click results. And it's going to search for these data. And here you can see it's giving me the images. So you can see that some of these images um, are only a small portion um, have data in them. So I'm just going to come down and select this image that has the most data in it. 
I'm not so worried about the exact coverage right now. I'm just more interested in showing you how to download this. So here's the image I want. You can show the footprint on the screen. If you click this, it'll show where that um, image is. Um, and then you can show the browse overlay. So it's going to overlay that image right there where it is in your area. So that actually falls a little bit outside of my area, and most of the stuff in my area is no data. But you know, that's going to be okay. We'll just use this image anyway. Um, and you can get your metadata and compare. Um, you can add it to a bulk download. I'm just going to go ahead and download it right now. And this is the part where if you have not created an account, you'll have to create an account at this part, and it usually kicks you back out and you have to go back through the whole process of finding your image again. Um, I'm going to download the surface reflectance right here. Um, you can get a type of atmosphere reflectance also. We're just going to get the surface reflectance, and I'll click download. That's going to take a minute to download. It's 231 megabytes. I'm putting it in this Landsat folder I have. And you'll notice it's a, it's a tar file. So once this is downloaded, we'll have to extract it. I'm going to go ahead and click save and then pause the video while it downloads. All right, so our file is downloaded. I'm going to open it up here in the folder. And I'm just going to go ahead and right click here. And now I'm going to uh, use 7-zip to, I'm just going to click extract here. Okay. And now you'll see that I have a lot of different TIFF files in here. Okay. So I have, and you'll notice, so I have this file name here, and it has the dates of the image, and it shows that it's uh, the sensor and the version. So the, these file names are very informative. informative. I'm not going to go through the whole thing here. Um, but let's take a look at some important things here. So you have some file names here that are going to be um, some probably derivative products. The ones we're after for usually are these right here, SRB1, SRB2, all of the SRB7. So that's surface reflectance band 1, surface reflectance band 2. Those are the files we want. I want these seven right here. Now, let's go look and find out um, what the Landsat 8 bands are. We're going to need to know this. So let's look at our Landsat 8 bands. We can go to this USGS help page, 1 to 5, 4 to 5, Landsat 7. OK, here's Landsat 8. So a band 1 is coastal aerosol, and it gives you the wavelength here. Band 2 is blue, band 3 is green, band 4 is red, band 5 is near infrared, and we go all the way up to band 7. And you got the panchromatic, cirrus, thermo infrared, and thermo infrared. Um, so we have those seven bands there, and then we might have those other ones that are, that are labeled here. Anyway, I'm not looking into what these products are yet. We're just going to focus on these seven bands right there. So let's go into QGIS now. We have the data officially downloaded. Um, it's not going to look quite like it you expect from a Landsat image. So if I go to Landsat, and let's just widen this out a little bit. We'll get rid of the value tool. So we can pull in this, which is our blue band. It should be black and white. We have a single band. We're looking at it black and white there. And they're all going to be black and white. But let's do this. Let's go ahead, um, and I'm just going to remove this layer. We want to merge these into a single raster, and that way we can display it in color. So I'm going to go to raster, I'm going to go to miscellaneous, and I'm going to go to merge. And um, I want to place each input file into a separate band, and I'm going to come and select my input layers. And I'm going to add files. I'm going to come to where I downloaded and extracted um, my Landsat image. And I want to view this as details. Drag that out. So I want to get SB1 to SB7. Click Open and click OK. 
I'm going to save this file, save to an actual file. And I'm going to go to my Landsat folder again here. And I want to name it this just without the SB1 on the end. And make sure that we're good there. And I'm going to click Save. And then I'm going to click Run. And so what will happen here is this will combine that those seven bands into one seven band raster. So let's go ahead and click Run. And this may take just a minute, so I'll pause the video while we do that. Okay, so this is finished now. So let's go ahead and close this. And let's zoom in here. Let's go to our symbology and we'll show you how we can adjust this a little bit so it looks more realistic. Okay, so let's go to our symbology. Okay, here we go. So now we have our red band is band one and our green band is band two um, and our blue band is band three. But if we go back and take a look um, at our wavelengths, that's not what they actually are. So let's go check this out. So band two is blue, three is green, four is red, and five is near infrared. Okay, so it goes blue, green, red, near infrared. So let's go back and adjust this um, accordingly. So this should be band two, band three, band four. Let's just double check that. Two, three, four. Okay, and now let's click apply. Okay, and now we get your traditional color imagery. We can zoom in and there are agricultural fields. You know, you can see there's a there river valley bottom down there. Okay, so that's our regular image. We can see there's a, a reservoir or lake right there, it looks like. Now, we can also do what's called color infrared. And the way we do that is we're going to change the red band to our color, our near infrared, which is five. We're going to change green, I believe, to red, which was four, and blue to green, which was three. Let me just double check this here. Let's go double check that. So green is three, blue is two, red is four. Okay, let's click apply and see if that looks like I think it should. There we go. Yep, that's what I think it should look like. And so here you can really see the vegetation pops out here. So if I scroll down, you can see these agricultural fields really pop out as red. This bare earth kind of is a neutral color. Um, and you can see maybe your darker conif your conifers are maybe a darker red. Um, and maybe some of that deciduous vegetation is uh, a brighter red. And you can see water here comes out as really dark. So this is sometimes used, to, this is often used to identify vegetation. Um, and near infrared can be used to identify water very, really well, uh, quite often. Okay. Now we're going to do uh, another band combination that's going to make the water pop out um, a little more. So let's pull this up. And we need to find out what our short wave infrared band is here. So we have two of them. Let's try, we'll try band seven first of all and see how that one works. If we're going to use band seven, we're going to use the near infrared, and we're going to use the green band. Okay, and so let's go back over here. So this one is going to be seven. This one's going to be five, which is near infrared. So we have short of infrared is shown in red. Near infrared is shown in green. And we're going to show our green band which I believe was three. Let's just double check that. Green is three, correct. And we'll keep that green. And let's click apply. Okay, there we go. And so let's see if that worked out. It's not quite what I was expecting. Let me just go, um, let's go try that other infrared band and see if that does anything different. So let's display uh, this as six, click apply. It didn't change things very much, did it? Um, let me just tr check one thing and we'll see if we can get that to pop that water out of really blue. Okay, so this is what it's supposed to look like. And once again, you can see the vegetation pops out here as green. You get kind of that bare earth there um, as red.
so the water's dark again because it uh, it absorbs um, all those all those light all those wavelengths. Um, so it should comes out as dark again. Um, and then you get uh, some other. I'm not sure what the blue is here. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that is. Anyway, it's kind of cool. You can see those different vegetation signatures popping out um, in those ridges and in those valleys. So that's how you can play around with Landsat imagery a little bit and how you can download it um, for free from the USGS. You can take a look in there. You can see all these lakes up here. That's pretty cool. Um, so there you have it. There's how you can get some free data. Um, in a video, an upcoming video, we will go over how we can derive some indices from this, such as the um, for, such as NDVI. That's probably what we'll cover because that'll give you an idea of how to do this. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, if you have any suggestions, please let me know.